no one living today and no one living in the foreseeable future will ever experience living in a, a natural community, what some people call an ecosystem or biome that is remotely healthy or anything remotely like it was prior to the beginnings of this culture's destruction of the planet. We have almost no idea of how fecund the planet was prior to this culture. We've heard a few things like, I mean, I, I've, I've mentioned this before, and I, I read this in a wonderful book by Laura Cunningham about what California was like before conquest, that if you were anywhere near a river or stream in California, you would probably see a grizzly bear every 15 minutes. And there are accounts of the cod being so thick off the coast of Newfoundland that you couldn't get your ship through them. And there were runs of capelin, uh, they're, they're small fish who, who uh, lay their eggs on the shore and they, they run into the shore and you would be ankle deep in fish. And, um, the, uh, and the, the, the sand became so spongy from all the eggs that you would sink in the sand, again, up, up to your ankles. And there were squid runs that were so big that the squid behind would be pushing the squid in front out of the water. And they would, uh, they would be like a foot deep and a hundred feet long of, I mean, a hundred feet from the high water mark out to a hundred feet in the water of, just the bodies of these squid, and you would have to clear them out with a shovel. And that's how many there were. Uh, whales kept people awake because with all their blowing. And um, there were places where it was pretty much a constant mist from all the blowing. And the greatest danger to shipping in the North Atlantic was not icebergs, and it wasn't rocks, and it wasn't fog, it was whales. There was so many whales that you would run into them, which of course is a hazard to them too. And I, I get a lot of these pieces of information um, from a wonderful book uh, by Farley Moat, a horrible, I mean, it's, it's wonderful and it's terrifying and it's sad. Uh, a book by Farley Moat called Sea of Slaughter. It was written or published in 1984. And he has lots of, primary accounts of what the world was like prior to, prior to its destruction, actually what North America was like prior to its destruction. And um, as I said earlier, Laura Cunningham wrote um, something similar for California, describing what the early European explorers saw. And I've seen accounts, I don't remember if this was in Laura Cunningham's book or not, but I remember reading about the San Francisco Bay that the early Spanish explorers said that the bay was as though it was paved with uh, sea lions. And um, the Gulf of Mexico, I've read accounts of sea turtles that it was as though you could walk across the Gulf of Mexico on the backs of sea turtles. And I don't have the research ability or the time really i've got other projects but i kind of hate it when people suggest projects to me because i've got my own stuff to do but i'm going to suggest a project for somebody watching this which is i would love i would dearly love to see accounts like farley mowat did of contemporary accounts collections of contemporary accounts for the rest of the world, like Laura Cunningham did for California. I would love to see one of those for Iowa. In fact, I have one for Iowa um, called a, a Country So Full of Game. Uh, beautiful accounts. Of, at one point, Iowa was perhaps the most biodiverse state in this, in this country. And I would love to see one of those for Florida. I would love to see one of those for Angola. I would love to see one of those for um, 
Iraq. I would love to see one of those for Iran. Um, the Baltic Sea. I would love a project that consisted of what was the world like. And there were walruses in France. Walruses in France. They were as far south as the Bay of Biscay. And there were walruses in the English Channel up until about uh, 1800 years ago. And we don't know this. There were penguins in the Northern Hemisphere. We know that, right? I've talked about that before. They were called Great Ox, A-U-K-S. And their name was Penguin in Portuguese, which means the fat one. And the penguins of the Southern Hemisphere, which are not related to the Great Ox, they were called penguins because they looked like the Great Ox. And the Great Ox, there were so many that on just one island, a French explorer said that they could load every ship in France and it wouldn't make a dent. Well, they did, and it did. And the last one was killed in the middle of the 19th century. And, I mean, did you know that there were walruses in France? And I would love to see accounts of what it was like. I, I've, said, I've said many, many times in many different ways and places that Iraq was a cedar forest so thick that sunlight never touched the ground. Greece was heavily forested. North Africa was heavily forested. I want to see those accounts collected. And I want to see, I want us to at least have the faintest glimmer in reading of what we have lost and what we have done and what we have destroyed.